Hi guys, uh, out tonight with Eric, uh, so we're going to go looking for conger eels, hopefully, and um, we're also going to drop our lobster pod um, down with some bait in it, see uh, can we get anything in that, so uh, we'll see how we do. I have the pod set up and I'm going to be using mackerel, lawns eel and heron in this, so we'll get it set up. What I'm using is an 8 ounce head on a sliding ledger and then I have about probably about a metre line and I've half a mackerel on it. So we'll get this down the side of the wall and see what happens. So I don't have it out too far, probably about a metre, a uh, metre five. And the reason for this is the conger eel, they live uh, near uh, structures that have crevices and little caves because that's where they live. So you don't want to be putting it out too far because too far they won't entice them out to go out that far. If you put it in right on top of them, what happens is the conger eel tend to grab the bait and pull it back into their hole and you get snags. So I just leave it about, out about a metre, metre five, just in order to give me some time to get the fish up. So we have the rods spread out very fairly evenly, probably about three metres apart just to cover you know, a big enough area so we can see if there's any bites. Now when you're fishing like this, you have to contend with crabs or lobsters that are picking away at your bait because obviously you're close in to rocks where the conger eel hang out. And what I'm using, I'm using half of a mackerel or a lawn seal or a heron. And the main part I prefer to use is uh, the head part because you can push the hook up through underneath the jaw and out the top of the head and it gives it a good hold. You see the, the bit of mackerel there, half half of that's gone off them and obviously that's the crab. So I'm going to just add a bit more on and switch it over. And I'm going to just, I have the bit of mackerel on, I'm going to switch it up, put a bit of uh, lawn seal, which is here. And I'm going to put a bit of heron also. I think I have one here. Yeah, it's a bit of heron. And as you notice, I'm using the heads and I'm cutting through the middle of the body, leaving as much... Um, out guts out as possible in order to create scent in the water for the conger eel. So I'm going to leave the mackerel head on, I'm going to pass through the lawn seal head and then I'm going to pass through the heron head and it's going to be a quite a big bait but you bear in mind that the crabs and stuff are going to strip some of this while it's down there so it's just about making it last as long as I can. Alright guys, I have something fairly big on. Jesus Christ. Hold on, like So guys, in the end, we weren't able to get this fish up the wall with the rod because he's about 15 or 20 pound. Uh, I had to take off my chest camera, lie on the wall, lower drop net down which I couldn't get him into. In the end I had to hand line him up the wall even with Eric helped me it was a really tough job. We did get him in, we did get him unhooked and then we put him back in the drop net and I lay on the wall and I lowered him back down and away he went. Before we go we're going to pull up our lobster pod and see is there any lobsters or edible crabs in it and it's just coming up the wall now but straight away we can see that there is a good few velvet crabs in it velvet crabs are that they feel kind of velvety when you actually feel them and they're great for bait and we also have got ourselves a lobster which is great now guys so here's the lobster here so what we're looking for in the lobster is you want to make sure that there's no V's in the tail because it's protected and then you check under here you make sure there's no eggs and if there's eggs you have to send them back and if the V is there you have to send them back. Now also um, the back you measure and it has to be over 88 millimeters. This guy is 92 so over the legal size limit so he can uh, come home for dinner and how you know the sex of it is you see the two spines there on it so this tells you that's a male now on the lobster you'll see just two claws there is a claw for cutting you'll see it's 
it's like a scissors and then you have this one for crushing and they're quite handy to handle in the sense that the crabs will keep trying to actually grab you the lobsters don't really know if they get you they will hurt you but it, the only thing they really flap around on is their tail The, the evening done now, it's uh, 3 a.m. and uh, we started probably about half 10, 11, and uh, we got uh, a big conger eel, and we also got a lobster and some velvet crabs, which are good for bait for the smooth hounds. So, pretty good evening. So, I was delighted to get the conger eel, a uh, big guy, I'd say he was in the high teens, if not over 20. Um, but yeah, it was a struggle to, to get him in. And uh, but it's done. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. Please like and subscribe, and I'll talk to you again soon. Take care.